We thank our participants. We invite you all to please uh, just have a seat. We will listen to the next panel. We're going to be talking about the following themes. We're going to talk about statistics of public finances and accounting and national account systems, the manual of payments. In this panel, we're going to have the moderator of the General Accountant of the Republic from the Ministry of Treasury of Honduras, Gil Malicet, Iscoa Licona. Good afternoon, and it's a pleasure for me to be here before you at the podium. I want to thank God, first of all, for enabling us to be summoned here sharing. We know that the past few years have been difficult, but, well, we thank the Mexican government, we thank Juan and his team for organizing our event. We thank the, the agencies that sponsored this, such as the BID, the Monetary Fund, Ipsos B, amongst others, which make, I mean, they all make it possible for us to be in the session throughout the seminar that the last three days in which we're, we're going to be sharing our experiences and tightening the relations that we have with our colleagues from different countries that are present. It's an honor for me to present the panel members. Now, we are going to have a major challenge, as Ramon said yesterday. It's our turn to keep our the public's attention after lunch and their motivation as well. You know, it, it's been delicious. We enjoyed this great lunch. Thank you to the host country. We thank you, Mexico. We're going to try to do the best we can. So, first of all, I'd like to present Mariana Sabatez Cuadrado. She's from the International Monetary Fund. Ms. Sabates will present the statistics of public finances and accounting. She is an, an economist, thanks to the University of Economic Sciences and Administration of, of the Uruguay National University. She has a master's in banking and finances, thanks to the U Catholic University of Uruguay. Since June 2016, she was appointed as a senior economist of the statistics department and public uh, finances in the statistics agency of the monetary fund. She has focused her efforts mainly in South America. She's analyzed South America, Africa, and Asia. In 20, 2006 and 2016, she was appointed as a consultant of the International Monetary Fund in the specific field of statistics and public finances. She was a professor and trained people to use a manual of statistics of public finances. She has missions, technical assistance missions, in which she analyzes statistics in public finances in Mozambique, Costa Rica, and Bolivia, amongst others, other economies. We will also have the participation of of, of Mr. Joao. He will speak about the national account systems and the payment manual. We're going to have the important participation, as I said, of Joao Fonseca, who's the director of the board that develops the, the norms for the public sector and finances, XSB. He's part of the board members of XSB and has been working with the United Nations to measure finances. So without further ado, I'll open the floor for Ms. Mariana Sabates. Well, don't count on my, the, I don't have the best narrative uh, capacities. I'm not as good at the podium as Ramon and Cesar, so please don't fall asleep during my participation. I'll begin. First of all, I'd like to thank our moderator from, from uh, for being part of the panel. We'd like to thank our Mexican counterparts. We thank the, uh, the impressive coordination. Thank you for inviting me as a representative of the statistic department of the International Monetary Fund. It's the second time I've been per I've participated, and it's extremely valuable to share our experiences because we share what we receive, what we've learned throughout our sessions. 
I'll explain my presentation first of all. I'll speak about this presentation. It might sound pretentious, but we have the reports of statistics, public finances, and accounting. I'm not before you trying to explain what accounting and public finances means to you. I mean, I, I know I'm speaking about accounting to professional accountants. I want to show you how important accounting is to create the statistic for public finances. We have to analyze and locate specifically the statistics and public finance data in correlation with accounting. What What is the receivable? What do we pretend to achieve with that data? I believe it's this slide now. This is the definition of my presentation. With this, I explain the content of statistics and public finances and what we do with this data in Latin America and the rest of the world. What, how do we work with statistics, accounting, and public finances in the fiscal year, in the whole cycle? Then we're going to talk about defining the analytical framework of the statistics manual of public finances. If we define the manual, it's important to have a thorough explanation. It's not very different in comparison with what you do in the field of accounting. Maybe there's different timing for the use of this, and maybe you have different sources of information. But at the end of the day, what we work with has its similarities. Irrespective of this, we know that there's a lot of work. We have to draft standards and have certain, uh, there's standardization in our practice. This, not all standards could be implemented the same way in all countries, so that generates differences. Besides these differences, the two packages or sets of information are extremely useful for public finances and statistics. Accounting is priority or extremely important. And last but not least important in the content of my presentation, I'll explain the similarities, differences, and challenges that exist in correlation to the implementation of standards in each of our countries. Well, this is the intro of my presentation. I'll speak about the definitions of the concepts that we work with in the Division or Department of Statistics and Public Finances of the Monetary Fund. In this department, we have many projects, in, and what we work with is statistics of Latin America. We have a project, and we developed the project in 2016, 2017 with CapTech, with the countries that are members of CapTech. We're working in the statistics field to analyze public finances. That project has progressed a lot. What we considered from the kickoff project, we compiled uh, the data of the sources of statistics. We contacted the central banks because they're extremely important for us to understand financing, debt, etc. And these agencies are correlated to the actions of departments of accounting. We have technical assistance programs with EFC's public debt. And I'd like to give you a glimpse of what we do when when we give technical support in countries such as Bolivia and the Equator. In the Equator, we have kicked off a project that compiles a lot of data. It started in 2018. I'm very proud of our Equatorian counterparts. They've developed and progressed a lot. And if you could see their statistics before that project started and you compare the statistics they work with today, They've progressed a lot. Their effort is important. They have a lot of accounting data and entries in correlation with statistics. We analyze public debt as well because it concerns us. We need to define the constructs. We need to define, as Ruby mentioned, sorry, I for, I don't, I, your name, sir? Your name, oh, sorry, Andreas. So you gave us the definitions of public debt. We respect the definitions of debt according to what's stipulated in the fi public finance manual. The concept is defined. The debt are the liabilities of government, and it's branched out into two dimensions. There's institutional coverage debt, and the other one is the instrument coverage of debt. In the coverage of instruments, we have the liabilities that impact the sector that's being defined, minus two types of liabilities. Capital liabilities and our share of participation and the accrued. 
and the rest of the types are considered debt. There's payable accounts, and that data of payable accounts are in accounting, in the field of accounting, and we don't find them in other systems of public finances. So it's very relevant for us to work with the information generated in the Department of Account Accountants. In Maastricht Treaty, we don't have that, but in the Manual of Statistics and Public Finances, we do have that segment. We've been lucky enough to work with, with Juan to share the information of our trainings online or our workshops online. We need to train ourselves to understand public debt, statistics, and public finances. I'll share the link to you professionals so you can follow our trainings online and enroll. We have reports about the observation of norms, codes, the acronym in English is ROSC, and we create these reports of observation and work with the statistics department. The last project we had with this observation happened with the authorities in Mexico. We work in assess. We assess transparency. We work with fiscal affairs. We work with a group, and Ramon is a representative of fiscal affairs, so he's here with us. I wanted to share the slides so you can understand what we're doing in my department. And I must highlight that, that we interact with the data of accounting, and it's necessary for us to have the accounting entries as a source of data. What I told you in the fiscal cycle, I mean, we analyze the traditional fiscal cycle. We have the economic frame with midterm activities that there's triennium plans, five-year plans, depending on the nation involved. We have the budget planning after planning the budget. We have the exercise of that budget in this cycle. And according to the exercise, we see the data mirrored in systems. Sorry for getting away from the podium because I don't know if you can hear me. Okay. I think I, I shout a lot, but okay. Uh, when we speak about transforming digitalization, having consistent data, uh, compatible systems, and having the developed interfaces, it's important for all the fiscal cycle. When we exercise the budget, we have to obtain reports. We have the exercise of the budget year by year, the remnant that's pending execution, the, audit, the financial reports, and and the exercise is mirrored in the systems. The, the, we have to feed bulk information of the accounting department in the system. At the end of the year, we have financial reports, the balance reports, which are audited. In the whole cycle, we have to build it all based on this flow, and we have to build a macroeconomic frame in long term or mid term to analyze the exercise of the budget. You see, the, the reports that are in the middle section. The statistics and financial departments need information that's sent to us timely and precise information, reliable information. We're already estimating some items. We're calculating, but if we don't have objective data, at the end of the day, you know, at the end of day, we must get that data and use it properly. But in the fiscal cycle, we use that data to draft fiscal policies, laws, and regulations. This helps the legislative branch to draft the law. You see the fiscal laws in, in different economies are object of development. And the data serves to nurture the frame in mid-term activities. If we obtain data, that are top quality or reliable, we can make it all possible. So the midterm frame will have this instantiation that's relevant, that's stronger, that's robust. So then, what I was telling you, I have clear objectives about the public finances statistics that will lead us to analyze the fiscal cycle and to measure the financial impact of the metrics we measure the policies in place. We measure or evaluate the impact in all the sectors of economy. We measure the impact in the public sector and the impact in other sectors. We assess sustainability in long term. 
of the policies. I stress on this point because we drafted the manuals that date back to 2021 and 14. We had a manual of statistics that contained purest definitions. Now we assessed uh, the cash or the principal in each sector. Something that I must explain now is in the statistics manual of public finances 2001-2014 leads us to review what's happening and the differences. We analyze the concepts. What, and what we do is to measure the cash because they are the use of cash and status and also long-term sustainability. So the two restrictions are important. At a certain time, we were lost. Uh, we need to think that cash continues to be important and a variable to be considered and a restriction as well. So that's why it says to evaluate the cash and the financing resources. And also, Andreas also mentioned during his presentation as well as other speakers, that we need to adapt or to follow a manual, but, and that allows us to compare each other as countries. And something that is not here, but what is very important, are metadata and clear concepts, because today we were talking about the uh, rated debt, facial debt, and ra reasonable value debt. Many Latin American countries, the nominal debt is called to the visual value debt. The difference is that the rated value is the present value with future cash flows discount discounted at the rated uh, value of the instrument and the amortized value will be at the final value of the debt. So in the manual of public finance statistics, all these concepts and evaluations are very well explained. But of course, we are used to talk about the rated value when we refer to another thing. Because other thing that was not in my bio, I come from Uruguay and I am used to compile that public, public debt and uh, and also see the rated value difference and facial value. So the metadata, the information of the statistics, we need to explain what do we include and what is the definition. And in, in what I was mentioning about cash on accrual basis. Well, uh, in relation to accrual basis, some countries face some difficulties in implementing, but all the progress of the accounting sector allows to solve the res to solve restrictions, uh, also by the budget execution and joining efforts with other entities. So now, I will talk very nicely the analytical framework of the Public Finance Statistic Manual of 2014. We begin with transactions. That was almost the same that we used to have in the previous manual uh, of 2001. But this uh, overall analytical framework analyzes the complete view of talks and flows of the sector you are analyzing. So in this case, in order to analyze the uh, total inclusion of this sector, you need to consider the accrual data and the cash data with something else in the accrual, because the implementation levels both in the pu public finance statistic manuals and NICSP are uh, different from country to country, and we cannot wait. As Ramon is, was saying, and he's not paying attention to my lecture right now, as Ramon said, you cannot begin with everything and just stay there. No, the fiscal data must include everything, even if they don't include the Manual of Public Finance Statistics and NIC. So please start by adding and joining some of the things in order to have an overall picture in the analysis. What do we have in transactions, revenues, expenditures, in non 
uh, financial assets, uh, which are these, the entry by sale and the output by, per by sale, by purchase. So in the previous manual, we were talking about uh, having a, a figure above and below the line. And this net debt is the line. So we have above the line are the revenues less expenses. And below the line is the way you finance those revenues deducted with the expenditures. Did you use the liabilities or do you use them to increase the financial assets? Well, then we have the stocks. They are an important part of the analytical framework uh, as from 2001 manual. And then we other, uh, with other economic flows, we have the, co the complete framework. Very few countries have the overall picture. And therefore, in, in the beginning, you need to use the financial balances, less liabilities, and then try to incorporate the non-financial assets. In a presentation, we listen that the modules are being developed for the evaluation of non-financial assets. But then we will be beginning with the easiest things. There is the stocks of financial and non-financial liabilities. And among the liabilities, we have the debt. There are the total of liabilities, uh, less two kind of instruments. So as from 2001, we will have the explanation. And here you will see it very well. We used to have a consistency between above the line with below the line. Everything that uh, enter less the resources below the line could be analyzed on the way it was financed. That was a consistent way of the analysis, and we continue to do it. Then another way that was consistent as from 2001 is the stocks and the flow. The stock of this period must be the same as the other stock, plus all the flows that enter in this period, but these flows are of two types, uh, flow by transactions and flow for other economic flows. Why are they split in two? Cesar, please do not sleep. Transactions are done by the government in a certain way. Conceptually and with the approval of other parties, in order to get a result. The other economic flows are shocks that they receive. They are external data, external to the will of the government. A clear example of other economic flows are the variations of the national currency versus the dollar. If we have a, a liability in dollars, that stock expressing uh, pesos will be higher at the end of the year. And maybe there is no other transaction in the middle. But what happened it was that the peso was depreciated versus the dollar. And we we have other economic flows that will not go in that line of transactions and will not be part of the deficit nor of the financing. But we'll explain why this public sector patrimony increase or decrease of value. That is one side. And the other that is widely used are the crises of natural resources, the problems that we face in, flood, in floods. And it, during the rainfall, a school is uh, flooded and, destroy, and is destroyed. Well, we will have economic problems. But uh, evidently, that was not part of the fiscal uh, policy of the government. And that is uh, ec another economic flow that will decrease the government uh, patrimony, but will not affect the those entries above the line. Whatever is done uh, to refurbish that school will fall into a deficit of the government because they need to fix the patrimony and to fix the non-financial patrimony. 
This is quick. And you know all this. I'm not telling you anything new. Uh, the similar and differences. There is a dashboard uh, that uh, Fong has prepared it. And maybe uh, somebody can put the link about the uh, differences of standards, NICSP and CFS, that are statistic of public finances. So that is uh, very useful to know uh, where are you in the standards. The differences, well, you need to first emphasize the similar things that are the same events, the reports and terminology similar. That is tricky because uh, similar terminology can lead you to a mistaken conclusion because the net patrimony of accounting is not the same of the net patrimony of public finance. It's a similar aspect, but it's also a difference with the statistic of fi public finance. Uh, the liabilities and assets for public finance, the contingencies are not part of liabilities and are no, not part of the debt. They are put aside of all this analytical framework and there are tables specific for contingencies. It doesn't matter the reality level of the contingency. It must be dealt apart. Hi, Mariana. You have just some minutes to finish your presentation. Okay, in relation to challenges, I will just finish this slide because it's very important. The implementation of the Manual of Public Finance Statistics of 2014 and NICSP need to be hand by hand. Why? Because we need the statistic of public finance in the accounting data, but in the middle, while we don't have it, and I will repeat it once again, we need the data of accounting in the statistic of public finance to check, but we, in public finance statistics, we manage a different timing. The consultative process and alignment of standards will continue. There will be standards that cannot be aligned, and there is a reason behind. But what do we pretend? When the standards or the differences between accountant and fiscal statistics demand their explanation, well, do it, because that will allow you to be more transparent. So as soon as there are differences, you need to explain them. And in that way, you keep the trust and reliability of the statistics and on the accounting system. Thank you very much, and I apologize for exceeding my time. Thank you, Mariana, for this important explanation about the statistics of public finance and accounting. I invite all of you to pose your question in the Slido platform, and then we will answer all of your questions. I am pleased to invite Joao Fonseca. He will be talking about the national account system and payment balance. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Before starting my presentation, I want to thank Focal for inviting me to this forum and to share my presentation. I want to tell you that I was missing you all in this annual important forum. For me, the, this venue for being in this hacienda is very important. I thank Andreas and all the organizers for the previous presentations and all the knowledge you shared during the morning because I know that after your presentations, well, uh, I, I will uh, have to be very specific uh, on cases of a study that of the United Nations. And I will be talking about the payment status, the national balance, and uh, well, thank you for your presentations. And without further ado, I will start my presentation. I will give you a general overview of what is what is the meaning of IPSAS-B, IPSAS, and the standards. 
Well, it says B is the standard uh, of the of the standards of the public. We have 18 IPSAS member states and in different places of the world. And we have governance topics and that act independently. And we have uh, a committee that surveys the interest of the public and private sector. Thomas is the chairman of that committee. Hello, Thomas. Thank you for all. IPSAS is the regulator or, or has those standards and focuses on the problems or issues. And we have the IFRS applied in the private sector because we do not be begin with it on scratch when we develop the standards that are applied in the private sector. We use statistics to be aligned. And also, I will explain to you, we are 38 IPSAs on the accrual basis. And most of it will be done in the future. And there are standards approved or are in the way of being approved. And I have here the information that IPSAS give us in order to study uh, what is accrued on the accounting systems. We have guidelines that are recommended in one of IPSAS instruments. They are not compulsory, but they are recommended to follow. We have a conceptual framework that supports those in general in order to go on developing IPSAS uh, standards. Uh, IPSAS are the international statistical standards. And right now, I want to talk about this statistical manual. Uh, from the left, uh, we have the system of national accounts of 2008. And we can see the ARC and the other manuals that are positive to study the macroeconomy and statistics. We have the support of the United Nations, the European Commission, the Economic Development Organization, and the Monetary Fund. And the second manual is the European System of Accounts Manual, and that is edited in 2010. That manual is applied in Europe, and thanks to other statistic agencies that are grouping Eurostats and work with European economies. The differences of these two manual is the SNA, because they are non-compulsory manuals. They can be applied if you define it. It is not a law and it is not mandatory. The SNA is a law and it regulates us and we need to comply with uh, in order to comply with many European standards in many specific areas. The IPSAS has more uh, guidelines besides the European regulator. And we try to comply with all the principles according to the Maastricht Treaty that, as Andreas has explained, we need to comply with as a mandate. And we need to focus on the law when they are operations that are managed in the European territory. The green is a manual of the government finance statistic manual. And uh, the Mariana has explained wonderfully what it has inside. And this manual also applies to the public sector. Uh, here there is another instrument, maybe you don't know it. Uh, it is not less important even if it is not widely known. Why? because it contains information of uh, transborder transactions and the uh, operations of the stock market in different jurisdictions. And it has compiled statistics of different economies that allows to conduct these analysis, uh, tra uh, transborder uh, analysis. What I want to explain in, in the uh, uh, folding of the information, I want to emphasize two points. We are trying to work all together in order to align our activities. Of course, we have uh, objectives. We have assets, liabilities, and the revenue and expenses. The problem 
exist when there are differences or discrepancies. When you have different objectives with IPSAS, we know that we need to comply with an economic analysis to take decisions in the legislative process. That is a different panorama, uh, but there in the payment balance manual, and you can keep uh, all the information of the world. And there is uh, financial and fiscal information in that manual. As Mariana said, we have clear objectives, and the figures in those instruments vary. The differences are evident, but when we talk about about that, uh, how that is constituted, well, you need to determine it correctly uh, so that we can continue working with the statistics and with the reliable content, we can generate and regulate uh, more information based on the statistics to be in compliance. Uh, ipsas -B has an instrument that was written in 2014 when Mr. Andrea was the chairman of ipsas -B. That instrument is his legacy. Uh, there you can find the guidelines. And every time that we develop an INSAPS, we uh, develop the conceptual or so general scope of IPSAS in the standards. And that makes our standards difficult to develop because you can also find the GFSM uh, manual that are three dimensional concepts developed parallelly with the standard. We analyze stage by stage, and every stage has a level of difficulty. And the standard demands to develop that level of uh, complete complexity. In this slide, you can see all the work that we have done, the scopes, the focuses at different national levels. And in 2018, we have the SNA in the Manual of Payment Balances. It has the analysis of payments. It's a joint milestone because we analyze 15 years. If Ipsos V and the standards modify every three years or every five years, well, the national payment balances and uh, national accounts must be undergoing adjustments. Even though we are not longer in an agency, they must continue. We see a great opportunity to strengthen us and to work with our accounting data and strategies and national and subsistence accounts. Uh, everything started in 2020, and the closing period will be for 2025. We will write two more manuals with the governments. We will compile a statistic data, and at a certain time, we will fix a period with the experts and actuarians and with other groups that work with United Nations, Eurostat, the World Bank, the Development Bank, and other regions that work with us. And therefore, there are a lot of members, many intellectual people, and to reach a global scope with us. IPSAS has a labor force, and I feel so honored to represent it and to work this, with these four task forces of IPSAS to be aligned and comply with our standards. Here, we have listened to Dave Mattis in the morning about the topics. We have a team of communication. It's a task force that will homologate terminology and put the corporate brand to improve the communication of all the statistic data to diversify the information among professionals and users. We have a work team that uses payment systems and financial systems, and we have other stakeholders, uh, United Nations, among many others. So uh, we have had to work with a lot of data, volumetric data, and there are instruments that need to be analyzed by the public scrutiny. And to each instrument, we give a content of 100 pages. It's a very robust content, and that demand a lot of effort. So thank you. With my presentation, I also wanted to share with you a product that Ipsos B has developed. This product 
allows to analyze what is happening in the cities and see the simil similarities and differences that Mariana has mentioned and give solutions to these issues. This graph allows us to have an overall panorama. The graph has different colors. In green, the type in SNG allows us to analyze IFSG, what IPSAs do, and see all the spectrum of different topics, their conceptual differences, and that allows us to see what happens in intermediate stages. We can modify standards and the categories or the standards and international statistics because uh, they can clarify many doubts. Um, purple and there they represented by them and with the yellow we see the other matrix with that it's a complete panorama of the IPSAF's in interrelation with other agencies there are links of users and you can go to the report of IPSA the one that is of your interest we have the standards the recommended standards the guidelines that is the content that is all the knowledge according to classifications and differences and this is the list of links and i will give you as conclusion two examples in ipsas 43 that is on the right left it is in the color red and yellow. There we have the risk model uh, divided by themes. Ipsos 43 was published recently, and that instrument contains the model or the method uh, to use it according to the content, I risk models and different sources of risks. Therefore, we code the matrix, and between red and green, we make the differences. And another comment based on what Andreas and Orlandi said, in Ipsos 44, on yellow, we have some common issues and common aspects for measuring the debts. And how the specific concepts of debt that allow us to study loans, concession, grants, and other topics. These instruments are subdivided in different chapters. And so we ask the governments of the cities to uh, comply with these in order to align everybody with, this, with the standards. OK, this is the end in my, of my presentation. Thank you for inviting me to explain all these topics. If there are improvements in the content, please inform me. If you have some feedback, please share it with me. You, uh, I invite your participation in the development of all this work. Thank you. Okay, we will try to respond to different questions that have been posted in the platform uh, addressed to Joan, to Joao and Mariana. I thank you both for your participation. You have emphasized our work, the relevance of our work in the accounting sector. And at the end, in order to build the public finance statistic, uh, you need to go to Manual 2014. And data must come directly from uh, statistics. OK, do everything pertinent to conduct the statistics correctly. Thank you, Mariana and Joao, for your participation. The chairman of the FOCAL will give some acknowledgments to the speakers for their outstanding participation in the eighth forum. Thank you.